afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Corey, for that very kind introduction. Um, so we will go ahead. This is my COI slide. Um, this will be my outline for the talk today. We'll do very quickly some background about mesothelioma. We'll go over what is standard of care clinical practice right now. Um, we'll go into the medical oncology aspects in terms of systemic therapy. And then I'm going to give you an overview about what's happening in the disease um, in terms of where the field is going forward with and what drugs we're using. Um, and then in the very last part, we'll do resectable disease first, and then we'll go into unresectable. Okay, so very quickly, um, as everybody knows, mesothelioma is a very challenging disease. The white part here is sort of the depiction of the tumor. It's like the orange peel around the orange. And so, as you can imagine, it's very difficult to get an R0, if impossible, um, for mesothelioma. Um, but we still do have different surgical techniques that can try to achieve that. Usually, we have a large latency period from the time of asbestos exposure. It's 20 to 50 years. So it is very difficult and challenging to predict when a patient might necessarily develop mesothelioma. In general, women always have better outcomes. Um, there are several different uh, main primary sites of mesothelioma. We're going to talk only about pleural mesothelioma, but there are peritoneal, uh, testicular, and pericardial. We do treat those differently, but that's not going to be the subject of today's discussion. There are three main histologic subtypes of mesothelioma. This is actually very relevant now because some of our agents are only going to be um, designed for specific histologic subtypes. So now you have to know um, what your mesothelioma is. So it's either epithelioid or sarcomatoid. Biphasic means you have components of both. Now, we do know there is pdl one IHC expression. It tends to be expressed more in sarcomatoid tumors. Um, there's a lot of different genetics that are underway. Um, one of the biggest um, discoveries over the last, um, I'd say, decade has been the discovery of BAP1 germline mutations. Um, this is a very small proportion of patients, and they generally do tend to be of Western European Caucasian descent. Um, we suspect that there may be a founder genetic mutation from there. But we do know that a good proportion of, BAP, of mesothelioma patients have BAP1 dysregulation. And so although we don't change our therapy at this point in time, um, it may be that we have agents that are specifically designed against BAP1 deficient tumors, which is about 30 to 40 percent potentially of our population of meso patients. There are several different clinical biomarkers. I would say I wouldn't worry too much about these for right now. Um, we don't utilize these at this time, but we will in the future. And as I mentioned before, pdl one IHC expression, just like we do in other solid tumors, is also seen in mesothelioma. It generally does portend a poor prognosis. Um, and we do tend to see this more in the sarcomatoid tumors. OK, so what is our current standard of care practice in the clinic? So in terms of chemotherapy for resectable disease, there have been no randomized controlled trials. So we are doing this primarily um, from the belief that trimodality therapy is going to be beneficial for our patients. Um, we didn't have very good systemic therapies before, um, but if you look at this table, these were primarily platinum-based doublets that were utilized in the neoadjuvant setting. And as you can see here, unfortunately, our median overall survival with trimodality therapy wasn't that great. We do know, though, that if you give systemic neoadjuvant chemo and you get a response, these are the patients that are more likely to have a better overall survival outcome. But the NCCN guidelines are currently this, where you can give four cycles of cis-PEM, either as neoadjuvant or as adjuvant therapy, um, before trimodality or bimodality therapy. And so, again, no randomized trials, but we do this as standard of care practice. Um, we do not give the platinum doublet with anything else right now. Um, but hopefully, as we move forward in the field, that may change. Now, in unresectable disease, almost any chemotherapy has been given to mesothelioma patients, and you generally don't see very high response rates. Um, combination therapies have been better historically, but essentially the only FDA-approved agent, um, agents have been platinum pemetrexed for unresectable mesothelioma. Now, in Europe and South America, they do use raltotrexed. It's the same thing as pemetrexed. There's really no major difference. And we certainly always, in unresectable disease, substitute cisplatin for carboplatin, and that's very reasonable. Now, the MAPS trial. So this was a study that was conducted by the French intergroup um, 
back in 2015 is when they presented it, 2016 was the publication. So this was CISPEM with and without bevacizumab. And then they continued the bevacizumab as maintenance therapy after six cycles of the platinum doublet. Now this trial gave a better progression-free survival by over two months and an improved overall survival by two months. And across the board, it appeared that most patients on the study gained benefit with the triplet regimen. In addition, quality of life demonstrated no decrement. And so it definitely appeared that the addition of bevacizumab improved survival as well as quality of life for our patients. So based off of this, the NCCN guidelines were amended, so you now can give CISPEM and BEV and get it paid for by insurance. Bevacizumab will not be getting regulatory approval, not because the results weren't accurate, but unfortunately this was not conducted as a registration trial, and so uh, the companies were unable to file with the regulatory agencies for the drug. But Right now, you can still get this covered for your patients. So the usual standard um, restrictions apply for bevacizumab. No one with a recent CVA or you know, heart attack in the last six months, no one with phrancomoptosis or bleeding diathesis should receive the bevacizumab. But if you need to reduce bulk um, for your patients, um, and they are of a very good performance status, ECOG PS0 to 1, you can certainly give this triplet regimen, and it's covered um, via the NCCN guidelines and by insurance. In the salvage setting, there is currently no FDA-approved agents, um, but we're going to talk about the NCCN guidelines, which has just recently been amended in the last month and a half to include pembrolizumab and ipinevo as salvage therapies for mesothelioma. So we'll talk about that in the ongoing clinical trials section. Okay, so what is happening in the field and where are we moving? So these are currently some ongoing clinical trials in the neoadjuvant setting. So remember, I mentioned we haven't made very much progress in trimodality therapy. Our median, best median overall survival is 25 months in our curable population, uh, which isn't great. So there are several trials ongoing incorporating immunotherapies. Um, we have SWOG 1619, which is set to open, which is looking at cispem atezolizumab followed by surgical resection with and without XRT, followed by maintenance of tazolizumab for a year. So we're following along with what non-small cell lung cancer is doing. Um, in addition, we're also looking at the combination of immunotherapy with radiation after surgical resection to see if we can not improve survival for our patients. The Canadians have been doing something called the SMART trial, which is chemoradiation followed by surgical resection. Um, they have had a very good response rate as well as overall survival in their initial uh, set of patients. Um, they've done about 60-ish patients, and so we are hoping to see more data from them. This is an ongoing larger trial being done in Canada right now. I would say, though, do not attempt to do this off protocol um, because this is obviously incredibly challenging um, to do surgical resection over such a large field that's been radiated. There's been an adjuvant vaccine study that demonstrated an improvement in PFS and OS using a WT1 vaccine, and there's currently efforts underway to try to convert this into a randomized international phase three study. There's a lot of intraoperative and intrapleural strategies that are under investigation right now. Um, I would say I just listed them here, but there's a lot of gene therapy being looked at and also PDT, but none of them have really made it beyond to phase three. Um, so I would just keep them in mind that these are things that are underway. Okay, so what about the metastatic setting? So everybody knows that the hallmarks of cancer, all the different dysregulation of the pathways that you can do. So right now in the field of mesothelioma, there's a ton going on with the antiangiogenics as well as the immunotherapies and also looking at cellular uh, metabolism as well. And so when we look at the emerging uh, frontline trials, um, I do want to touch on a couple, specifically the cisplatin pemetrexid nitendinib study called Lumimizo that was just presented at ASCO this last year. Um, so this was cispem with and without nitendinib, which is an oral antiangiogenic inhibitor. It targets VEGFR and PDGFR and FGFR. And then they gave nitendinib maintenance afterwards. Now, when you looked at the intent to treat population, median overall survival in PFS, it was very significantly different um, for PFS. Um, there was a trend towards overall survival benefit. Um, There's about a four month improvement, um, absolute numbers. And this trial was not powered for overall survival, but it was for PFS. 
So Lumimiso is now in the phase three study, which is a registration trial. And so if that does hold up with the phase two, natendinib will then become likely a standard of care for mesothelium in the frontline setting. Um, so this is definitely something to look out for. I believe the phase three is already two thirds um, enrolled. And so um, this is definitely something that to watch out for. Now I do wanna make a quick point and that is um, this will only be probably for the epithelioid patients because the phase three study is only enrolling epithelioid mesothelioma. So remember I said you now have to know the different histologic subtypes of meso, and this is partly uh, why. So in your clinical practice, if natendinib gets approved, you, have to only, you can only give it probably for epithelioid patients because that's how the trial was designed. Now, quickly, there is no predictive biomarker for any anti-angiogenic, um, so this is a little problematic. Um, but until we, in the absence of that predictive biomarker, the registration approval will probably just be for any epithelioid mesothelioma patient. Um, now, we don't know whether or not bevacizumab will be different from the oral VEGFR TKIs. Um, there's another drug, sidirinib, that SWOG is putting forward, which also targets VEGFR, PDGFR. We also don't know if it's the maintenance effect um, that gives us our survival benefit. And if we just gave maintenance PEM, would we see similar data? Maintenance pemetrexid is not FDA approved in mesothelioma, but I will confess, I do give maintenance pemetrexid in my patients that are not on protocol, um, and I've gotten it paid for. Um, but throughout the rest of the world, this is not the case. Um, and technically, you're not supposed to do that, but you know, you do what's best for the patients. So uh, there's also uh, the question about whether or not if we combine the antiangiogenics with immunotherapies, would we get an even better outcome for our patients? And so there are a couple of studies ongoing right now throughout the world that are looking at that combination of antiangiogenics and immunotherapies. Okay, so what else is going on in mesothelioma? So I do wanna to touch on the atomic trial. So this again is for biphasic and sarcomatoid only mesothelioma patients. And that's using a drug called Adipeg20. And so this is an agent that basically depletes your cancer cells of arginine. And usually in biphasic and sarcomatoid meso, there's a paucity um, of arginine in the cells. So when you deplete it, they die off. And so there was a phase two trial that was published, I think, in Lancet that showed a significant benefit in biphasic sarcomatoid meso. So this is also a registration trial. It is a phase two, three that's ongoing right now throughout the world. Mesothelin targeted agents have been investigated. Um, so you can see here from this table, there are lots of different ways of targeting mesothelin, whether by monoclonal antibodies, CART T cells, by vaccines. And the reason why everyone's interested in mesothelin targeted agents for mesothelioma is that mesothelioma tumor cells express mesothelin. And so the Artemis trial is ongoing right now. It's cispem with and without amituximab. They're looking at overall survival as their primary endpoint. And so that is a frontline trial for all comers um, that they're hoping to see a benefit. Now, what about immunotherapies? So there's quite a few immunotherapy trials ongoing right now, but we cannot give cispem with an IO right now. There is no data for that. And you're probably not gonna get it covered by insurance. So, you know, that question that they asked earlier, don't do that yet. Um, so most of these trials have just been initiated. I don't anticipate anything's going to read out at least for the next six to nine months. Um, but maybe by World Lung next year, we should start to see some of the preliminary efficacy data, um, maybe from the Australian trial first. So um, in addition, there is an IPNEVO frontline trial compared to chemotherapy. And so this is a frontline study that's rapidly accruing. Um, and so we probably will get a readout on that hopefully in the next year of some preliminary data. Now obviously there's a whole ton of studies in the salvage setting looking at all these different uh, agents. Um, and some of these are typical mesothelin targeted agents, as I mentioned before. Um, the only thing I would say is that there have been this study right here, anatumumab versus navalbean. Unfortunately, that was a negative study. Um, so that was unfortunate, and that was just presented at World Lung. In terms of the salvage setting, when you look across the board at all the different checkpoint inhibitors, and then also I'll touch on the MAP study, um, as single agent checkpoint inhibitors, it's pretty consistent. We see about a 20% roughly response rate in these patients. Um, we don't have enough data to know whether or not it correlates with PDL1, 
but we are seeing that trend. Um, but I think we still have to look at the microbiomes on these patients and tumor mutation burden to really know who's going to be the best responders to single agent checkpoint inhibitors. Um, combination um, immunotherapies are also being looked at right now. Um, at World Lung, there was a presentation on Nibit Meso. Um, also at ASCO and World Lung, the MAPS-2 trial, which I'm going to touch on in a minute. And then the INITIATE study was presented at World Lung. In the salvage setting, very uh, significant response rates, probably about 25 to 27 percent. Um, disease control rate looks very good. Um, I would say not you know, clear whether or not this has to correlate with PDL one IHC expression. And like I mentioned before, we're all knowing um, across all the solid tumor types that microbiomes, tumor mutation burden, um, as well as PDA1 might be more relevant. So the MAPS-2 trial was presented at ASCO and World Lung, and this again was mesothelioma patients who had progressed after one or two lines of prior therapy, and they gave Nevo versus Ipi Nevo. This was not designed to be a comparative trial, though. They had two parallel designs with their stats analysis. Um, but Ipinevo gave you about a 25% response rate and the disease control about 50%. Um, and so this is something that we're definitely looking forward to seeing more data on. However, um, based off of this information, the NCCN guidelines were actually amended to allow Ipinevo in the salvage setting. And also pembrolizumab was also included in the NCCN guidelines. So, um, like I mentioned, we don't have any initial um, definitive survival data, but OS does look promising for MAPS-2. Um, there's a randomized trial that is currently being, from what I'm told in France, being under, uh, developed underway. And then we don't know if it correlates with pdl one IHC status, but I think we're going to learn a lot more from the frontline IPUNIVO trial um, about that. And then, as I mentioned before, Ipinevo has been included in the salvage setting for your meso patients, so you can now give it. Um, and it is covered by insurance um, if you give them the NCCN guidelines. You do have to fight a little bit, but you can get that for your patients. And as I mentioned before, pembrolizumab is also included as well, um, based off of the response data um, from the Evan Alley publication. So a ton of IO trials in MISO are underway, um, and all of you will have our slides later so that you can um, refer to this if you need. So to conclude, the antiangiogenics, in my opinion, definitely have a role in mesothelioma, um, and I do consider them as a standard treatment option. You can right now give bevacizumab, and insurance covers it. We'll see about natendinib. Um, it's very important to ultimately, from a research perspective, identify the patients that benefit the most so we reduce cost for um, our overall healthcare system. And then we also have the question about whether or not IOs can be added at some point. Now, the immune checkpoint inhibitors, I do think, are going to change our standard practice for MISO. You've already seen on the NCCN guidelines we can give Ipinevo and we could give Pembro. Um, and so we'll have to see whether or not moving them frontline um, will be beneficial or not. Right now, you can't do that. Um, but as the trials come out over the next year or two, we may see adoption of that practice. And as I mentioned, Ipinevo is being looked at in the frontline setting versus chemo. And so we'll have to see. And so I think that this is my last slide. Yes. <laughs> 